one of the big things that Angular 2 did is it broke out everything from being uh, all or mostly under Angular to being under several different areas of focus, right? Angular Core, Angular Common, Angular Compiler, et cetera. So that you can bring in the parts of Angular you need for your particular Angular application. Now having said that, let's talk a little bit about that thing that I said we put a pin in, right? The versioning issue. Angular Router is on version 3.4 point something or later. And Angular itself is on 2.4 or some or later. So Angular 2 was a big step over Angular 1. It was announced back in 2015. It's a big change, 2014 actually. Um, they did a lot of work to get Angular up and run, Angular 2 up and running. It's been very interesting the way it's been developed. One of the things they did is they moved over to what's called semantic versioning. Has anyone used semantic versioning? Can anyone give me a short definition of it? I mean, you've used semantic versioning if you've used uh, and if you've used NPM. So it's that three number versioning scheme, right? A dot B dot C. A is the major version, B is the minor version, C is the patch level, right? So patch level, usually bug fixes, no breaking changes. Minor, maybe a bug fix, maybe the introduction of a new feature, but no breaking backwards compatibility. Major, breaks backwards compatibility. Maybe you rolled up a lot of stuff, maybe you changed the architecture, maybe you changed the behavior. But a major change would be something that breaks backwards compatibility. Now the Angular team in moving over to semantic versioning decided, and there's a, I have a slide on this, so they're going to have regular releases of Angular. That is, they expect that every six months they will have a new version of Angular, and I'm calling Angular 2 Angular and Angular 1 Angular JS in this case. So they're going to have a new version of Angular every six months or so. So they were going to have Angular 3 in March, by the way it's March. They were going to have Angular 4 in six months from now, in August-ish, right? So on and so forth, right? Those would not be big breaking changes the way Angular 1 to Angular 2 were big, breaking, huge changes. They were going to be evolutions of the Angular 2 style of doing things, right? Now, here's the interesting thing that happened. They figured out or they learned or they remembered that while all of their main Angular code was two point something, because of the way the Angular router had evolved, it was on three point something. They wanted to bring this into harmony. So they're skipping over Angular 3, and they're going to have an Angular 4. So we're going to go from Angular 2 to Angular 4. What I don't want to have you uh, do is next week you get back to your jobs, and you freak out because you see a press release about Angular 4, and you're like, I just learned Angular 2. I went all the way to Palm Springs so that I could lose any, and now I'm two versions behind. This seems bad, right? It's really just the next edition of Angular. They actually have release candidates for Angular 4 out there. It's not going to be a radical change. It should be a set of features that have been added. There will be some breaking changes, but it won't be a radical syntactic change the way that uh, Angular 1 to Angular 2 was. 